We play and call it work. Hey there guys, Quirk here from MiniWarGaming.com and welcome to another War Machine Mark III unboxing video. In this video we're going to be opening up the Legion Battle Box. Let's go ahead and check that out. Here we have the Legion of Everblight Battle Group Starter Box. On the front you can see some lovely box art showing all the models that you're going to get inside this box. And on the back you get a detailed overview of everything that's included inside. You get a Nephilim Bolt Thrower, two Shredders, as well as a Nerif, and then you also get Carissa, Conviction of Everblight. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. So starting off, you're gonna get a fairly large box. It's gonna be big enough to hold all of the miniatures and tools that you need inside. Just put that over here. And the first thing you get when you open the box is your Primal Rules Digest. Now this is a pocket-sized version of the rule book. So it's nice and small, you're gonna get all the rules laid out in here. So if you have any questions or disputes about the rules while you're playing, you're gonna have this handy little book available to you. It doesn't have any lore in it, so it's nice and compact. And once you're done with it, it's small enough to fit back in the box or your travel bag as well as maybe even your back pocket if need be. Just put that right here for now. You're also gonna get a 18 inch Hordes flexible ruler. Comes in handy if you need a ruler to start off with, but most people will jump straight to the tape measure. Then you're gonna get your Legion of Everblight introductory guide. Gives you a short story uh, featuring your new caster, as well as a expansion options, some tactics on how to use your battle box, as well as where to go to grow your force. You also get a little bit of a layout on War Machine and Hordes as a whole. And then the back of the book here, you get some instructions on how to build and paint your miniatures, as well as some painted tutorials there. So, good to have those handy. They're definitely gonna come in handy for you if you need to start working on those. If you're a newer player and don't have a playmat to play on, don't worry. The box does contain a 2x2 double-sided playmat. It's made out of a nice latex oily material, so it's definitely going to be able to survive for quite a while there. Both sides do feature two different types of terrain on them. One has some ruins, a forest, and I believe a obstruction. The other side has a hill and a forest. So, And again, it's small enough to fold back up and stick back in the box if you're going to be traveling around with this. After that, you've got your basic training manual. This is an abbreviated version of the rules, as well as it has some pictures and stuff like that. If you're looking to just get right into the game, don't want to spend a lot of time going through the digest there, this is a nice little breakdown of all the rules. It goes over your movement, shooting, melee, concealment, cover, charges, fury management, stuff like that. So if you're looking to just get right into it, this is definitely the place to start. Then once that's done, you go inside the bag, or pardon me, the box, and you're gonna get two bags. One's gonna have some fury tokens as well as some spell tokens for you and you're also going to get a little bag with some dice in it. As for the miniatures, you can see here we've got uh, looks like the Nephilim right there. So looks like they're cast in a light purple color so it matches the Legion colors a little bit there. And the models themselves, the plastic looks pretty good actually. There's not a lot of flash on these so you're going to be able to just take them right out of the bag and get straight to assembly there. So we've got the Nerf right there. We've got two shredders, and then you've also got the caster right here. She's actually a wonderful looking model. There's a lot of details on the cape here. I'll see what I can do to just kind of show you guys that. Uh, there you go. You can see all the little details actually cut out into the cape, so that looks really, really good, actually. Then you've got your cards. I'm going to move the box out of the way for this part here. And the first thing you're going to see in the card pack is your obs obstacle. It's a just a regular playing card, but it actually has folding instructions so you can fold it up to make a one inch high wall. So it gives you instructions there on how to fold it, what it should look like when it's done. You should put some tape on the bottom, as well it has a printed texture on there for a wall itself. Then we go over to the cards, then we've got a shredder here. There's two shredders here for four points. We've got your Nephilim bolt floor, thrower for 11 points. And we've got the Nerif for 12 points, giving you a total of 31 points, which is actually exactly how many Warbeast points the caster has. So this is perfect for doing a battle box game or a zero point battle box game. So definitely comes in handy there. Carissa herself is a speed five, strength seven, mat seven, rat four, defense 14, armor 16, command nine caster. She has a spear, which is a two inch range, pal strength 13 magic weapon. She's got six fury and 17 boxes. When you look at her special rule, she has set defense, so if anything charges her, they're getting minus two to their attack rolls. As well, her spear has critical sustained attack, so if you get a critical hit on the first hit there, you no longer have to roll from further attacks. Looking at her spells, 
She has Cloak of Ash, Howling Flames, Quickness, and Tactical Supremacy. And then her feat is actually called Rage of the Dragon. While in her control area, friendly faction models gain plus three strength, and their melee weapons gain continuous fire. This will last for one turn. So, not a round of turns, that means even free strikes are going to be able to cause that to happen, which is pretty cool. A little bit of a history on Carissa herself. She was actually a, a, uh, originally a Nis, and what ended up happening was they were tasked with guarding a mountain pass, but they got overrun by Legion, and she was actually exposed to some, bl some blight caused by Everblight. So when this happened, she immediately gave up all of her beliefs and immediately trusted that the Everblight Dragon was the source of all power and immediately became just fixated on serving him. So then she joined in and started working for Legion as a, for a little while there, and was tasked with actually defending one of the Warcasters. Now what ended up happening was when the, or sorry, the Warlock, when the Warlock was actually in battle, he died, and she rushed to the body and actually removed a shard of Everblight that he was carrying, and in an attempt to protect it and make sure that it went back to where it was supposed to, she infused it with her heart. Now, once she escaped the battle and got back to the Everblight stronghold, it was expected that she'd have to return the shard, which meant that she would end up having to die. But the order to give the shard back never actually came, and so she then developed some warlock powers and is now serving as a warlock for Everblight. And she believes that by not having to give up the shard, it's Everblight's way of saying that she's been entrusted, and now she does everything she can to prove to Everblight that by doing this, it was not a mistake. So, a little bit of history there for you on the new caster. Looking at the battle box here and just the way that she's kind of laid out, it looks very flame heavy. I'm seeing a lot of similarities here that I saw with the Menox, pardon me, the Menoth battle box, where you're going to want to light a lot of stuff on fire. A lot of her spells, I believe two of them, have the continuous fire effect. So you've got Clo Cloak of Ash, which gives Ash and Veil out, which it affects anything that doesn't have immunity fire. You've got Howling Flames, which can, can cause continuous fire. And you've also got her feet, which makes it so that you're going to be throwing a lot of continuous fire out there. So that's really, really cool. It looks like she's also going to work really well with any of the melee troop units, especially with Tactical Supremacy, giving them a reposition of three inches, which is pretty huge there. Plus, when you give all of them plus three to their strength, as well as continuous fire, that starts to become pretty deadly. So looking very good there. Doesn't look very strong as a warlock, or pardon me, as a working with war beast, but she has a very high war beast number. So a little bit confusing there. So hopefully we'll see how that works out. And for looking into how this works out, you can go ahead and click the link below. We're going to be doing a demonstration game with uh, Carissa, if I can ever pronounce her name right. So you can go ahead and click that link below. Vault members only. So if you're not a vault member, you can go ahead and click that link anyway. You'll be given access to a seven day free trial where you get to see this battle report, as well as all the other open box battle reports we're doing to showcase all the new Warcasters. So you can go ahead and click that link below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, happy wargaming. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that unboxing video to see a battle report played out between Josh and myself. Go ahead and click the link below. I'm going to be bringing the... I think I'm bringing Legion? Yeah, you're playing Legion, I'm playing Crix. Yep. He stole Crix yes. from me. So, uh, if you're watching the Crix unboxing video, go ahead and check out the Legion one so you know what's going to be in that battle report. If you're watching the Legion battle report unboxing video, go ahead and check out the Crix unboxing and then check join us in the vault to watch this battle report play out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Wargaming.